Can everybody hear me? Let me know if you're getting a double, double hit on this. So are people hearing me in double? You can hear me or you're hearing me in double. So far, so good. You're not hearing me in double. Sounds good. Okay. So sorry about that. Uh, I don't know. I think it's when you, you hit 48 technology just bites you. Um, so we're, we're going to take some questions and we're going to take a tour. So just to kind of go back to this, we, um, we promised a tour of the collection. It's snowing. It's sleeting out for you in the Northeast. You know this already. Um, yes, uh, Q sorted out all the issues. So we're back live streaming. We're going to talk about um, Bond 25. We're going to be talking about upcoming events. We're going to take your questions. This is impromptu. There was no preheating of this whatsoever. So you're in my office right now. Let's. Uh, you can kind of take a look at my desk. It's a little crazy. Um, and my very Dr. Evil Blofeld chair. This is where I'm texting and doing stuff and you got Mr. Connery here holding the headphones. He's often very nice. Um, but you probably don't want to see the office. You want to see other things. So let's let's go down into the collection. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually turn the camera around. We'll see if that goes well. Um, hopefully it does. And for now, we're just going to kind of walk over to the door here and uh, we're going to take you through this a little bit. So hold on. We're going to go down the stairwell here and we're going to get some music. You got to bear with me for a moment. A little bit. Background noise is good, don't you think? All right, so we're going to head down the stairs. And as we head down the stairs, this is going to, uh, away from the normal part of the house to, well, let's face it, the, um, the fun part of the house. So let's connect this all up. And we're going to turn things around. Let's head down. Now, one of the things that I've done in my collection is I really focused on putting my Bond collection in chronological order. I mean, why not? So we start with Dr. No and, and we'll kind of go on from there. So I'm slowly creeping down so I don't tumble down this. That would, uh, that would not be pretty. So you'll see in the first area right here, we've got Dr. No in all its glory. I've got a small table down here. It's got a lot of fun stuff on it. Yeah, let's see if we can get down to our level. Do you think Penelope Cruz should be the next Bond girl? Is it because she has your nest last name, S. Cruz? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Do you see we've got a little bit of mix um, of things from Dr. No. Uh, a lot of lifestyle things, uh, the beers, the pictures. I've got a lot of little detail stuff, <laughs> even down to like the radioactive goodies. We got a nice tarantula. I mean, to me, it's all about the details. Even the picture you see in Dr. No. So it's fine. Um, then we've got From Russia With Love over here. I always start with the poster. I think that the artwork and everything is fantastic. Polista says, do you have a Walter PPK? I do. I do. And um, it's, uh, it's a little bit... I got it for historical reasons, but mostly, let's face it, because of Bond. Um, and then I've got my attache case, which has kind of a load of different things from it. You can see kind of all the accoutrements, including uh, the sovereigns, the ring, the cigarette holder. And check this out. All right, here we go. Time to embarrass myself. Let's see if that kind of uh, plays well. That is me, a very young me. Uh, holding, let's see if we can get this. Sorry, there's a delay in my video, so if I'm not getting it perfectly, please forgive me. Um, it's a very young me taking a look at the screen used uh, attache case from 
obviously from Russia with Love. That's the one that Q was going around. Gosh, my hair was not always gray. What the hell? And by the way, just little accoutrements like the Orient Express lamps that you see on the train. I love that type of a detail. Nudity. Put the kids to sleep. I, did, I didn't even know. What's horrible is I've had some friends come in here um, when I didn't know about it and take some pictures. And unfortunately, she has fingerprints on her. That's horrible, people. What's wrong with you? Goldfinger. Ah, Goldfinger. So here's the uh, Goldfinger display. This one is, uh, this one's getting pretty robust. There's a lot of stuff in here. You can see we've got the Slassinger sweater. Um, we have, uh, oh my gosh, we have so much stuff here. We have the tracker. We've got uh, the Rolex. Um, even stuff from like Joe's Stone Crab. We've got his piton gun that he scales. Tons of golf stuff, golf bricks. Things from uh, Stoke Park, Stoke Park's uh, club, Dom Perignon, Odd Jobs hat, even his onesie from the Miami scene. Um, what I love about this is, to me, collecting is all about um, finding things. So Ross uh, Corbert says, where would a beginner start on finding places to buy bond collectibles? Where do you buy most of your items? Um, I've had a guru slash uh, junkie named Ed Maggiani, who helped me and still helps me to find a lot of these props. So um, I would find somebody like Ed. He's the Spy Boys. Um, I'll put his website in there, but quite frankly, you can see so many videos on him as well. Finding a guru like that and basically just creating a wish list. There's there's quite a few prop makers and prop hunters out there. Uh, just make a uh, wish list and have at it. I mean, quite frankly, you're going to have a lot of fun with it. Let's see if we can change the camera angle here. Give me one second. Don't rush, don't push. There's plenty for all. <laughs> I'll do that later when I'm not like, uh, oh, wait, hold on. I'm going to actually wound up, wind up. Uh... Sorry, gang. One day I will learn. So let's continue. Uh, we've got Thunderball, arguably one of my favorite Connery films. And um, again, we've got this amazing poster. Uh, how I choose the posters, uh, it's the ones I like. That's it. Real difficult, right? And um, what we have here is a smattering, they like that, Pooh Bear smattering of different things. We've got Connery with his um, sunglasses. We've got a lot, obviously, of the scuba gear. We've got the rebreathers. Oh, you're seeing my collection real. Hold on, something fell. That just will not do. You know what? I'm not going to take it apart. Yes, I am. I wasn't going to take it apart, but I'm going to fix my collection right in front of you. So there we go. That's a little bit better. Um, so I love these rebreathers. This is obviously from Factory Entertainment. Um, they worked with uh, fans and prop makers to create this. That's also what I love about it. But then I've got little things like pieces of, you know, the actual rock at some of the Thunderbolt sites in the Bahamas, dig that. Um, my collection is a mix of travel and lifestyle, props, gadgets, wardrobe, grooming. It's kind of a little bit of everything. Um, over here, let's swing around. Whee! Uh, we've got, um, this was in the Intelligencer. It was a, uh, a little bit of, that music is actually driving me insane. Sorry, uh, a little bit of a background on kind of what I am as a Bond fan. This is a helmet that's going to be changed. It's just an off the shelf helmet that's going to be made into something that looks a little bit more like, oh, something from You Only Live Twice. So here we go with the only uh, You Only Live Twice area. Um, would you like to get the Dr. No tank as a model? Sure. I do like models. I don't typically put models and cars and things in the collection. Um, my collection, at least this part of it, I like to have it as one-to-one. -one. And by the way, just so you know, as we turn the corner here, so this was the corner we were just in. I'm trying to get you a lay of the finger, uh, the blueprint here. Um, as you turn here, I'll slowly start to do it. You see kind of more of our Connery area, but watch this. Look behind me. 
Okay. So that's more of the collection behind us that we'll get to very shortly. So you can see it is a pretty large space for the collection. Um, it goes all the way back and then even to the left and in the bathroom and storage areas. We're going to take you all through it. And my arm's going to get tired. You'll see. Uh, David, can you name your favorite piece of clothing collected? Actually, it's interesting you say that. Um, uh, Joe Darlington gave me an idea for a new vlog coming up. Uh, my top 10 Bond outfits that I own. So I'll be wearing each of the top 10 Bond outfits that I like, that I think are very iconic, um, for whatever reason that I like. I'm going to give them full reviews and then wire them in the top 10 and we'll do a countdown. So stay tuned for that. Uh, oh my, I could get lost in there all year. Daniel says that. Uh, you know what? It's fun because people come in here. We have drinks and food. And at first it's like, oh, and then they relax. And then they spend a couple hours here looking at all the toys, like this area. And you can see that some areas are a little bit sparser than others. Um, I do like the fact that I've got the correct attache case from You Only Live Twice. To me, it's about the hunt. Sometimes I'll get the wrong thing and then I'll improve over time and get the right thing. Here we've got Honor Majesty's Secret Service. What I love about this display, and I'll, I'll come in a little bit closer, is it really does, sorry guys if I'm getting you dizzy, it really does represent uh, so many different aspects of the movie. Uh, my travel to Piz Gloria, uh, you know, the, even the glasses he wears in the beginning got those correct ones. Um, and it's just one of these things that just, you know, connects over time, which is great, even down to his helmet, etc. But I love this particular one. Again, one of my, um, sorry guys, I'm like cradling a Surface Pro. Uh, it's one of my favorite movies, but it's just one of these kind of really iconic displays people tend to gravitate to. And speaking of gravitating, there's no good segue there. Uh, we've got Diamonds Are Forever. So here we have Diamonds Are Forever. And we're taking a look at it and uh, lots of diamonds. That is not a real stuffed cat. So those of you animal lovers, especially cat lovers, please no hate mail. But we've got little things that would be on M's desk. It's all in the details to me. It's, you know, the ashtrays, it's uh, fingerprints, it's big diamonds. It's, you know, all of those types of things that kind of connect over time. Check this out. Let's go down low, low and slow. We have uh, Live and Let Die, and Ed Maggiani made me one of my favorite items in my collection. Trespassers will be eaten. Love that sign, just like in the movie. And we have a bunch of accoutrements, including um, the Gillette Track 2. We've got the Filet of Soul matches. We've got uh, the Pulsar, little alligator biting a card, some burnt cards. So it's a nice representation. Again, not a ton of stuff that I've collected from that movie, but still a nice representation. Uh, Ollie Perry says, those Unimagined Secret Service goggles are the business. Yes, they are. Another piece from, uh, another piece from Ed Maggiani. So um, here we go over here. Now, this is interesting. So I'm going to do something weird. I apologize. So this area right here, La -dee -dee, la -da 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 -da. This is kind of like a sitting area. I wanted to make sure that we had an area when we came down here to just hang out and sit so we can put a bunch of chairs around here. But what I have in this area is, um, you can see it if I pull back this way, is a collection of marketing products. So we've got a mixture of um, the sideshow dolls, the big chief uh, figures. Sorry, they're not dolls. Did I do? Did I do that? Um, but we also have a lot of marketing things. Now, I'm in marketing and advertising. It's what I do for a living. This is not it. And so what I've done is I've put a lot of different things that I really think are just really kind of cool marketing pieces. You've seen some of the fragrance stuff. But what are some of the drinks doing? Uh, what are some of the stationary pieces that they really did a great job marketing with? Um, toys. What has Omega done in their marketing. So this is this is a little bit of an homage uh, even to, this is something pretty rare right here. Hopefully this comes out, guys. I'm 
on this kind of strange delay myself. So apologies if this isn't coming out. But this is a grouping of uh, ties and glasses that were never marketed. Um, this was uh, donated, and there's a shirt too in the back. This was going to be a Bond, James Bond collection that was prototyped. There was a few that got out there and then never again. So um, I love that type of stuff. I mean, it's rare. It's interesting. It's a little bit of history. Uh, where do you get the little Nelly? I think I got it somewhere online. Uh, eBay is great, I'm sure. Um, Mar Maria Kelly says, Shatterhand is the working title of Bond 25, and Rami Malek is the villain. So, thank you, Maria. Um, one of the things I'll say is this. To me, I don't believe anything is official until it's official. And I know, I, I sound like a cynic, don't I? It's just there's so much rumor. I mean, Shatterhand was a title that was bantied about a year and a half to two years ago. It came from uh, a fan thread. It, it picked it up. Uh, one small news group picked it up. Then the bigger news groups picked it up, like BBC and Variety. And now it's the working title. Is it the working title or is it B25? Pretty sure it's B25. So until I hear otherwise, I'm going to call it B25. Um, and Remy Malik, I think that would be um, interesting, but again, not it. Creepy. No. It, so basically, um, this is something I wanted to fill a space in, really like the uh, Mr. White outfit. So this is the complete Mr. White outfit here, including the NPL turtleneck with a little background. Over here, this is where usually people wind up. Um, don't drink and drive, but this is where we will obviously do some of our race car driving. And there's a lot of competition here because these things are not easy to keep on the track. So let's see if I can get a bird's eye view here and uh, give you a sense. Oh, see, it's already gone off the track. Hold on, hold on. Oh, oh, oh. Ding, 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 ding. Oh, my gosh. No. Well, that ends the video. No, I'm just kidding. It just, these things happen. Um, so we're going to go over here. Now, this is, um, this is the Roger Moore area. So come on over here as I slowly kick a car. So here we have the man with the golden gun. Obviously, really, really like this area because, quite frankly, it has got some really cool stuff in here. Um, as you can see, it's got the golden gun. It's got things from the bottoms up. It's got uh, different rings, even. Uh, it's got some of the wrenches. It's just, even the wood elephant. It's just a nice representation, small representation, but I really like it. You know, what I love about the Roger Moore stuff is... It really has so much to offer. I mean, here you've got the spy who loved me. You see the um, the bag and Jaws' teeth. You've got the lipstick. You've got even the microfilm, not one but two, I guess in case I lose one. Um, his headdress, even things from the Hotel Denali. Again, trying to put the location stuff in. But you can see uh, this is a piece made by Ed Maggiani. It lights up. I mean, it does everything. So, I mean, it's what I love is when you get uh, props with some functionality to them. I mean, look at the detail. So here we are in obviously for your eyes only. And this was cool. This this is um, I don't know if you can see the crossbow here. Hopefully you can, but um, not screen used, but the correct one. And I was able to uh, meet uh, Carolyn Bouquet. Very charming. Uh, didn't look like she aged a bit scary obviously made a deal with somebody here we've got octopussy and uh frederick says any interesting rumors about the bond 25 love interest so many rumors um everything from flashbacks to you know is there going to be a new love interest uh but yeah we're gonna we're gonna talk about that in a second but look at the detail i mean this is this is why i love collecting because somebody took the time to actually put a, an envelope like this together with all of the, the details from Octopussy. 
and of course had to find a tennis racket which is used as a weapon uh, a view to a kill not the greatest of movies in my opinion but still a lot of fun okay how's everybody doing out there Ali Perry a great title for a Bond film would be a piece of dialogue from the early books that I've been reading to hell with it all right I like it to hell with it oh wait a minute no might, maybe not so good because um, I don't know if they want to harken back to anything Daniel Craig said uh, earlier like to hell with it maybe like he's saying to hell with the you know if I was a PR person I, I might have a trouble with that um, title but I digress Take a look in back of me. All right, so this is our viewing area. This is where we'll get a drink. Um, we'll watch a movie on the TV over here. We have the TV incorporated into the collection. I didn't always do that, but um, I part of the fun, I think, of coming here is that you're, you're watching this film, whatever the film is, obviously a Bond film, and you know, you're, you're immersed in the collection. So I wanted the TV to be immersed in the collection. But before we do that, let's go over to Pierce Brosnan. And you know, Brosnan, I don't know. Lately, he's been getting a lot of flack. I thought he was a great Bond, um, especially Goldeneye. I thought Goldeneye was the mustard, as they say. Um, fantastic. I love some of these detailed props that we have here. Um, everything from cards to Perrier to Jack Daniels to uh, Stalin. You've got the dam jumping coat. Love that piece right there. Um, we've got a lot of little pieces right here that harken back to Tomorrow Never Dies. Some of them screen use. So now what's happening here is as we get with the more recent pieces, uh, we are getting to some of the more interesting screen used items. Even as we go to The World Is Not Enough, We've got some really cool pieces here. We've got the caviar. We've got uh, Brosnan and Bond's uh, authorized personnel tag. We've got his glasses. Love these things. I, I know a lot of you saw these in the movie. They're rarer than Henstein. These are the Calvin Klein uh, ski glasses that he has. Super cool. I don't know. I'm, I'm just a huge fan of them. Uh, do I still wear them? No. That's awful. I should. But maybe because they're so rare, I, I get a little weird with that type of stuff. And then die another day. I get it. You know, you almost hear like a wonk, 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 wonk when I show this part of the collection. But very cool lifestyle pieces. I mean, the sunglasses, the the knives. You've got the 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 sonic ring. I mean, come on. I, you got to give that. A, you've got the cufflinks, his razor. From a lifestyle standpoint, it's very cool. And again, start to get some more screen use pieces, some background pieces, etc. Okay, so in the collection, we've got to make a jump. Uh, David, do you have surround sound hidden? I do. Very good. I do. I've got, obviously, uh, the front speakers. I've got back speakers. I've got wires running underneath. And I try to subtly hide the speakers. Um, you know, it's not that it's disturbing that you're seeing technology. It's just all of a sudden when the sound starts and people start doing this, I like that kind of moment. So you're not going to see the speakers too overtly. If you look hard, you can see the speakers. Um, somebody asked, are they all authentic screen props? No, most of them are not. Most of them are replica. Um, so there's great question. Uh, there's a difference. There's screen accurate, which they're the right prop or piece of wardrobe but they're not screen used. They're screen used, which means they were in the film. They, this was the one shot in the film. And then there's a uh, replica, which it's created to represent that. So there's, there's a lot of that. Now, let's go over to Casino Royale. This is a screen used bikini that Solange wears. Okay, so screen used bikini. And then screen used pieces up here, like the security guard, as well as, um, uh, Demetrius, that is his screen use suit in all its glory. And then if I tilt, <laughs> we, if I tilt the computer like this, you can see this insanity. Um, and the insanity is the Casino Royale collection. Let's see if it kind of straightens out there. You can see as I kind of move along here, 
Uh, there's a lot of pieces. This is where I start to get a nice kind of collection of Casino Royale, one of my favorite, if not my favorite, films. Um, you've got lots of little hidden pieces here. I know that you've seen this before. Sorry. Um, so, Sophie Harley, Algerian Love Nut, with all the other little pieces. I keep that covered just in case. And then probably the pride of my collection is this screen-used Armani jacket from the airport scene that Daniel Craig actually wore. So this is one of those pieces that I told you about that's screen accurate and screen used. So it's got a little bit of a, a little bit more panache to it. Up here is Le Chief's outfit, outfit when he's on his uh, boat. That is screen used. Um, and then we go into Quantum of Solace. And let me see if there's any questions. Hi, what do you think about Steve McQueen's style? Oh my gosh, I, Steve McQueen's style is amazing. Uh, to me, a lot of, it's so funny you asked that question because we're going into Quantum of Solace. To me, uh, part of Quantum of Solace is really emulating that Steve McQueen style. So speaking of that, um, here we have the Quantum of Solace area. So we've got um, Dominic Green up here. That is screen used, all of it. Pants, shirt, everything. This is not. This is screen accurate. So it's the Y3 jacket that he wears in Haiti. Um, this is the Tom Ford Harrington jacket that he wears in the movie. And this is a replica, screen accurate, made by Tom Ford. And this was that project that uh, a group of fans had started that obviously netted some things out. I'm going to turn this a little bit so you could see the rest of the table. Here we go. So there's a lot here. I've got sunglasses. I've got watches. I've got his earpiece. I've got the quantum. I've got tons of paper props. I've got things that he drank. I've got his jeans. Uh, down here, I've got a suitcase. Now, all right, this is a new thing for the Bond experience. You're getting on the floor with the Bond experience. I apologize, but there's a reason. Hold on a second. Oh my God, I'm going to regret this. All right. I'm hoping you can see this while I talk. This suitcase is pretty cool. And it's not the suitcase. It's the fact that everything in the suitcase is screen used. These are all the bad guys' tops. I have their pants too. Uh, from the scene when they're in Haiti by the uh, seaport. This is when Bond is on the motorcycle and he jumps on the speedboat. And the speedboat chase ensues and that crazy editing. This is all their screen used outfits. It's pretty cool. And by the way, I had my father-in-law, who's the size of General Madranos, wear that. I'm just saying. Yeah, it's a family thing. Skyfall. Here we go. So, things start heating up. Uh, the collections start to get a little bit bigger. Things start to get a little more serious. Um, panic ensues, etc. Um... Quantum of Solace was a great movie. It's really grown on me. I mean, I think it's grown on a lot of people. I got to switch hands. So here we go. We've got Skyfall. We've got, again, screen accurate, screen accurate, tons of screen accurate. So not a lot of screen used, but we've got a lot of screen accurate. And we're going to bring it in close. And you'll see that the table is filled with things. I mean, it's, it's filled with uh, all types of uh, accoutrements from casino to necklaces to Bond girl to shaving kits uh, to knives galore, which we're going to be having a vlog on knives coming soon. So stay tuned for that. Ear, even the sign from Skyfall. Our trusted uh, Billy Reed jacket. This is the kind of one that really put the Bond experience on the map. So like to have it here. And it's just a great outfit in anyway. But here's the Skyfall area. And then if we go low, so the collection is on many different levels, we see even more Skyfall things like his sneakers, his training outfit, Target, the whole nine yards. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're up to Spectre. So here we go. And my arms have not tired out. That is insane. So here is the Spectre area. Now, the Spectre area is chock full. Why? Well, because it's the most recent movie and I did a lot of traveling. So there's a lot of traveling aspects to it. Um, there's a lot of, obviously, fashion, uh, grooming, 
There's a lot of uh, props. There's a lot of costuming. There's wardrobe. I mean, really, there's a little bit of everything here that's really strewn. And the amount of detail uh, that people and prop makers and, and wardrobe artists and costume designers put into it is unbelievable. And you even have some of the, the, the licensed pieces as well. What I love about um, some of the Skyfall thing, uh, oh, Joseph Darlington. Good morning, Joseph Darlington. How dare you? Uh, yes, he loves the suede jacket. I love the suede jacket too. And by the way, I, I think this is, um, sorry, my connection over here is a little spotty. I think if you're like most people, let me go over here so the connection doesn't disrupt. You find your favorite Bond piece of wardrobe and you tend to wear it. Thank you for the duh moment on a Saturday morning, David. But it's true. Um, that suede jacket during spring and fall, it's my go-to. I mean, I grab it. Um, I've gotten little stains, spills, pulls on it. It's to be used. I don't treat it with a kick glove. I use it. Same with that Tom Ford Solden jacket. Okay. I'm going to show you now. That, but that's the general collection. Okay. But if you're down here, why would you go upstairs to go to the bathroom? You wouldn't. Hopefully not. So what you do do, <laughs> look at me, do do, um, is you go into the James Bond bathroom here. So here we go. We have a, a wall of celebrities. And then we have a nice little ode to Turnbull and Asser. Nice signing by Le Chief over here. We have an entire wall of different events that I've been to. But this is the James Bond bathroom. This is where you can... Um, uh, I got nothing. You know what to do with the bathroom. It's not the fanciest bathroom. It's not the Piz Gloria bathroom. It's not uh, the Dear Irving bathroom. It's a bathroom. But it's, you know, you can still wash up with James Bomb and things like that and put on a little bit of Floris 89 and have a fun time with it. Okay. I hesitate to show you this next room, but I'm going to. Uh, Alan Hilburn. Hey, Alan. How you doing? Outstanding collection. Greatly enjoyed getting to see it. Ah, thank you so much. This is just a really sloppy way with one guy and a Surface Pro hanging off of his arm, so it's not the greatest. So I'm going to show you a closet, and I really thought about, should I not even show this, but you're going to see some of the chaos. So this is not the chaos. Um, this is some of the chaos. So this is a closet that's, the door's always closed, and um, this is a lot of screen use wardrobe, a lot of replicas, and a lot of Tom Ford boxes, as you can see over here, that um, I need to organize, or there's no room to put them out here in the collection. So there are boxes and boxes of stuff that I need to like do something with. It'll happen, um, but we're not done. Take a walk with me, and I bet you the connectivity is gonna get better this side of the house. Okay. Thanks for taking that little walk. All right, so now we are at the restricted area, okay? What is the restricted area? The restricted area is not, and I'm just warning you, it's not the prettiest part of this downside area. Um, but it's gonna be fun to show you because you get to see kind of the backstage. So first of all, as we walk into here, we see a little homage to Spy Kids. My kids growing up love Spy Kids. Um, Greg Nicotero of The Walking Dead, um, good friend, sent some Spy Kids stuff. So we've got, uh, you know, the spider. We've got some outfits and wardrobe and some prop pieces from Spy Kids. Love that stuff. We've got some things from Indiana Jones, which is always a lot of fun. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't push. We have some stuff from Indiana Jones, but here is kind of my workout and workroom. So this is where I do my P90X. Um, this is obviously just a mat, TV, pull-up bars, etc. What I love about this is it's really simple, as you can see, in what we're doing. Um, over here, we have some more Bond goodies, uh, records and magazines, etc. It is a nice little spot. Sorry about the movement over here. Um, that shows some of those pieces. 
But take a look back here. This is where, um, again, more storage area, but also some of the exercise things. And this is some of my superhero props. So a lot of these are screen used, like this Mantis piece. A lot of you know me from my old AJB RFP days where I was the Mantis. This is because, again, Greg Nicotero um, of The Walking Dead sent me some Mantis pieces. I fell in love with the design of the Mantis. So these are all screen used. They light up. They do different things, but I'm a big fan of the superheroes, not as much as Bond, but it just gives you an idea. We've got recording devices over here and material, and then work area. So the work area is where I kind of rebuild some of these things. I think everybody needs a work area and a garage or just something to tinker with. Um, happily, I'm surrounded by prop people that I don't typically need to do that, but it's it's an option it's an option so now somebody says um oh Jaroslav says do you have a room full of weapons i do not um you mean like an mib situation i do not um it's one of these things where i'm happy to visit and experiment with uh other friends things you've probably uh seen the videos but we're going to go upstairs and finish the discussion Come take a walk with me. By the way, I don't know how it is there, but it is like icy storming out right now. Hold on. Don't rush. Don't push. All right. Well, that was a quick one. Let's see if we can right size this. Give me one second, everybody. Fix yourself a drink if you want. All right, let me prop this up a little bit. Hopefully that's good. David, what is the one piece of Bond memorabilia you don't have um, but you would like? That's a really great question. Um, that I do have something that, there's something that I want that I would like. That is um, the Ericsson phone from Tomorrow Never Dies, and I'll tell you a really sad story with that. Um, I used to own the screen used Ericsson phone when I was much younger. I don't know what I was thinking. I wound up selling it. I can't even remember the circumstances. I sold it. I didn't sell it for a lot of money, but I sold it uh, to a, um, uh, a place that sells props professionally. And they've since resold it. I don't know, you know, once, twice, but it kills me because I had the thing in the case. And um, now I don't. So I've, I've, I've implored, you know, a couple of uh, prop makers to consider making a replica. I would just love to own a replica of it. So it's one of the pieces I would love. Um, same, it's snowing here. Which pull-up bar is that? Oh, gosh, I'm away from the pull-up bar already. I forget which pull-up bar it is, um, but it's great. So I, I think I've told this to people from time to time. I do P90X3. What I love about it is I just need dumbbells, pull-up bar, and push-up uh, bars, perfect push-up bars. That's it. And space. And that's it. And that's what I love about it. It's 35 minutes a day, which is great. Hi, David. I have quite a few, James says, uh, Bond pieces of clothing. I'm saving up for either the NPL Lapis Blue Roll Neck or the Royale Filmware Solden Jacket. Which would you recommend? You can't go wrong with both. So here's my thing. The the NPL Lapis Blue, to me, that is uh, a piece that will never go out of style. Their, their pieces are, um, well, they're just, they're, they're classic. They're incredibly classic. So to me, that's something you probably want to invest in first. But the, the Royal Filmware stuff is amazing. It's just high quality and you're supporting a, uh, a Bond fan to boot. So there's that. Do you have good photos of the phone you want replicated, says Drew. I do. I have really, really good and measurements of the phone. So any prop maker out there that wants to tackle this, let me know. Let me know for sure. Let's talk about, um, let's talk about a couple things real quick. Uh, first of all, just as a reminder, I know you've seen a lot of things on Instagram and elsewhere. Uh, there's an event coming up uh, this Saturday. Not this Saturday, not today. Next Saturday. Uh, actually almost around this time, 9.53.
So we, in the morning of March 9th, there'll be a group of Bond influencers who are going to be at Spyscape, uh, 007 Driven. And that is the new uh, Spyscape uh, initiative that's going on. And that is something that I'm incredibly excited about. Let me just shut this off because I just realized that music is still playing. And that's not going to help. Uh, Spyscape has uh, worked with Eon to really create something very special. We have no idea what it is. We have no idea what it is. It could be it could be four rooms. It could be like sold in elements. It could be totally interactive. I kind of love that. We have no idea what this is. But we're going to walk in there. We'll experience it. I'm pretty sure we cannot videotape or do any pictures. But what we'll do is we will... Uh, talk about it before and after. We may do some live streaming. We'll definitely do a vlog on it. But more importantly, there'll be um, fans there, influencers. If you're in the area, come down and say hi for sure. Um, love to meet and greet some of you. But uh, that's that's coming up. And then we've got Secret Cinema and maybe a couple other surprises. Uh, but here here's a little something new. I would love you, the fans, to start to... Uh, Create your own events. Create your own geographical local events. And, you know, it's it's interesting when I hear from people who say, you know, I just don't have anybody in my area. Put it out there. Uh, you could do it on uh, Facebook or YouTube, etc. But it is a, just a great way to connect with people. And again, seriously, it's better than getting a box in from you know any of the Bond brands because you're connecting with individuals that uh, share what you do. Uh, S. Cruz says, sorry, I ask again, but I would like to know this. Would you like to see Penelope Cruz as the next Bond girl? Oh, I wouldn't mind seeing Penelope Cruz at all. I think she's uh, she's a fine actress. I, I think it needs to be a good actress um, more than anything related to, oh, you know, she's she looks the part or, or she can be action-oriented. What day is Spyscape again? Uh, that is going to be, well, it runs for, for quite a few months. We and other... Um, uh, podcasts and vlogcasters, vlogcasters, is that a thing, are going to be there on March 9th. We've got uh, Jeff Weibo uh, from the Canadian division of 007 Canada. We've got Bean James Bond. We've got Bond Armory. We've got Dressing Like Bond, who's going to be there. Uh, we've got Matt Spazer from the Suits of James Bond. And Taylor's with Love is going to be there. Um, we have John Broughton, who's going to be there. We have a whole list of of different individuals. You'll either recognize them or recognize the names. But in addition to that, it's just nice to gravitate for even a couple minutes and just connect. Uh, so it'll be interesting. Okay. Events aside, uh, talk to me. I'm going to go, I'm going to start with you all in the chat room because we got quite a few people in the chat room. Um, what are we thinking about Bond 25? We've seen cabins in the woods. We've heard all types of rumors. Uh, who here is excited and what are we excited about? I'm going to wait a second. I'll tell you. So I'll start. I said I was going to start with you, but there's a, there's a delay. Um, I'm excited because I, I feel and hear that the engine is going. Um, I feel like, you know, whether it's wardrobe or props or locations, um, I think they have got these things into place. By the way, I think they're also ahead of the game. I think when we hear a rumor, it's sometimes probably a month or more old. I'm just being frank. Um, as far as filming is concerned, this whole idea of it's going to film beginning of April, I think it might film sooner. It's just kind of, I don't know, what, what I think. Uh, this is the world of speculation. And let me plug in my battery before we go off. Um, it's the world of speculation, and you know how speculation is. Speculation is so dangerous, but so much fun at the same time. So we'll have to see kind of what that does and, and, and what that connects on. Uh, someone says, uh, excited, need Felix Leiter, though. Also want to see Bond play golf. That would be very cool. Bond doing any kind of sports-oriented thing, I think, would be a, a lot of fun. I, I second that motion. I'm excited to see Craig as Bond one last time. You and me both. I think I think uh, if I was to guess, I would say both the producers, the director, everybody involved, including Daniel Craig, really have a lot at stake. And they want to see this one go out 
on a major high note. Um, I think they know that Spectre did not meet their expectations, never mind our expectations, and they want to do something about that. What do you think about Jenny not returning? I'm sad. I'm sad, but I, I, I think uh, whoever's in place for the new costume design will do a great job. Uh, they usually choose, like Jenny, very passionate people, very, people that are very connected to characters meeting the James Bond legacy and not, not disconnecting that. So I've been happy so far. Uh, now that Newman ain't returning, I'm hoping D. Arnold comes back. What a legend. I, Ross, if, let me tell you something. Let me tell you for a fact. If David Arnold comes back, they will be rejoicing throughout the Bond community. He's perfect for the role. And you know what? He took a little rest, and uh, it's time that he, he gets back to work. Hi, David. The sooner Bond 25 comes out, the better. Can't wait a game of golf or a gym fight. Oh, that's interesting. So so let me get this straight. So you've got Bond working out, and suddenly someone like throws a, a, a barbell or a dumbbell at him and whips him with like a band and think, yeah, all right, I could see that. I could see that. There's been a couple of you know, really classic sauna fights in, uh, in, in action movies, but I could definitely see that. Uh, next film, let's get Tim Dalton for M. <laughs> You're kidding, right? No, that would throw everything off. It's funny. I like it. Hopefully, no further reference to the brother plot line. Can I can I say a little amen there? I, I agree. Um, David, how do you want Bond twenty five to end? I what I don't want to see is Bond dead. I'll tell you that right now. I do not want to see Bond dead, um, and I don't really want to see Bond passing the baton. Let's just wrap it up in, in kind of a neat package, and then we'll move on from there couple more questions and then we're going to kind of sign off because we've got a couple vlogs that we've got to film today. Uh, we're doing some uh, James Bond getting in shape vlog today. We're filming a knife vlog today. We're filming a grooming one. So we've got a whole day. I I'm pretty excited because uh, it's a day where Danielle and I are doing much. So we're doing this and then we're going to film some vlogs, which should be fun. It'll be interesting to introduce some of the other double O's, like 006 or 005. Yes! Oh my gosh, you're getting sick of me saying this, I know, but I would love to see some more double O's. Come on, we know there's a double O section. Have them walking down a hallway. Have them uh, working out. Have them um, playing volleyball. No, that's Top Gun. I just have them doing something where we connect with a larger world. The reason why we like to see James Bond in his apartment or making a cup of coffee is it helps us to fill in all the color moments and experiences that fill in the characters. Having him surrounded by double O's do that in a very visual way. Come on, please, dear Eon, please, I will give you a donut. Uh, Bond doing yoga, can you imagine? Oh, okay. So Angie has Bond doing yoga. So here, here we go. Here's here's how that pitch goes. So um, Bond and uh, Madeline are in a yoga studio. The camera pans down, and Bond is doing a downward dog uh, with Madeline. And he looks at the camera and he goes, "Christ, I missed the Cold War." What do you think? What do you think? No. Uh, Bond grocery shopping. Okay, now we're just getting crazy. Although Bond at Trader Joe's would be pretty funny. Can you imagine him going, Madeline, where, where's the organic avocado? No, no organic avocado. This is just a regular avocado. I don't I can't see it. That's why Moonraker is my favorite book. Yes, there's a lot of description of Bond doing James Bond stuff and not just 007 stuff. Let's kind of mix it up a little bit. If the villain is blind, they should have a scene where he tortures someone using a scalpel. That would be funny because he can't see. I get it. I get the humor. Okay, we're going to start to, uh, we're going to sign off. I'm going to give you back your Saturday. This was a real impromptu one. So um, we should be having some surprises in the near future. I would bet your bottom dollar on that. So stay tuned for those surprises. Stay tuned for all this engagement. Uh, this has been David Zaritsky for the Bond Experience. We're going to see you real soon. Hope everybody has a great, great Saturday. And we'll talk to you very soon. Take care.